What's up guys? It's King Daddy Dmac and welcome back to another episode of Minecraft. It's been a little while. Yeah, I know. I know. Too long. Won't be that long again. But uh, I've been keeping busy on the world in the meantime, so it's not like nothing's been getting done. But let's take a look. Last time we were just starting um with making the Blaze Farm. And um let's take a look at how it's gone. Holy crap, look at that! Look at that! It's all finished. Yeah, yeah, I'll show you guys how I made it. I'll cut back to that. But look at it. I'm just so proud of myself. So freaking awesome. And man, this thing pumps out. And when I say pumps, I mean pumps out XP. It is ridiculous. Blaze mobs, um, they give you 10 XP per kill. Whereas with any other mob, I'm pretty sure any other mob, um... The only one I'm not sure about is the cave spiders. But anyway, any other mob, like the zombie one, it would only give you uh, 5 XP per kill. So it's already double the XP, and these guys spawn wicked fast. So very cool. It's a cone-shaped type of thing with the pressure plates. Really not that difficult to build. The crusher is a little bit of a bitch. But um, I'll show you guys that in just a moment. Oh, I freaking love this thing. And these, of course, I don't know if I already said that, is so that you guys can see better. But um, got a whole lot of wart farms going. I'm going to dig all these out, and I really want to make this a pimp base. I hate the nether, but I'm starting to like it now that this is finally done. And, um, yeah, we'll get some automated ones going. Let's go down here. Got a big dig. Such a big hole. Man, this took forever, this project. But uh, got our blaze right there. Hold on just a moment. I'm going to turn off the uh, animations or the uh, particles. All right. Turned off the particles just because it lags it out a little bit. The only thing I haven't set up yet is the on-off switch for it. And uh, you may have seen the crusher that I did right here. This is identical to uh, Ethos Crusher. Um, I tested out quite a few different things on this. And um, honestly, I really liked his the best. And uh, you know what? If it ain't broke, don't fix it. So anyway, for this thing, of course, we've got the on-off switch, and this will be, or excuse me, this will be the on-off switch, and then this is the crusher on-off switch. When you press that, boom, 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 shuts them in, gets them automatically down from the crushers that go side to side, down to one hit. By the way, how do you like my new bow? Got enchanting bows in this bitch. Hell yes. Really liking that, and we'll get to that later because we have all the XP in the world now. So anyway, they're all down to one hit. And just nail them. Hit those blaze rods. They drop between zero and one blaze rod per guy. And boom. And look at all these blaze rods. I've been doing a lot of farming here. But um, anyway, let's get back to how this is made. So I'm going to go back now to right where we left off. So I'll see you there. All right, guys. Now we're back to pretty much uh, right after what the last video where we had ended off um, about, what, two weeks ago. And um, yeah, I decided, as you could obviously see from the finished product, but mostly I'm going to go with sandstone. Uh, or yeah, sandstone. And then I'm going to go with the uh, stone bricks for quite a bit of it just because I have a lot more... Uh, cobblestone that I can turn into that so it just helps on saving on resources also another real quick thing too I had said in my last video to have a layer of three blocks where the spawner is you only need two and that really screwed me up the first time I built this I was one block off for the entire thing so not good you only need the uh, two layers and uh, eight by eight and of course you can see you should be able to see the spawner at the bottom and in this direction, it goes a little bit longer, as we had discussed last time, because the center of spawn is actually right there, not in the center of the block. But, anyway, we have the beginning of our shell. Also, let me just say, uh, if you guys are building this, you should dig out a little bit area, just where you can plant wart while this is going on. That's what I did. I'm not going to do it again, since this is just to show you what we're doing. But um, you should definitely do it because it's a good time to let wart grow while you're doing other stuff. So anyway, we want to have for the shell the uh, one block 
above that's open and one air block below. And then here, again, I think this is where and why I decided to go with the uh, stone brick, just because it saves on blocks. So we're going to put that in here. Now you could make this entire top area of whatever material you're using, or else you could make it all of glass if you want a nice viewing area. So really whatever you want. And I, of course, I want to have glass there so I can see what's going on. So let's get this part of it done and we won't have to look at it. And then we'll come in from the top at the end to clear out all this dirt. Alrighty. It's such a pain in the butt to do this legit also. It's a lot easier to do. Of course, everything's easier to do if you're doing it on creative mode. So anyway, that's going to be kind of the design for the whole thing. The two blocks like that and then with the viewing in the center. So let's get off here. How do I get out? Where do I get out from? Oh. Alright, doing good. Now just to make it all match up. And again, this is where our viewing area is from the side. We could use, again, if you want to, you could just have it a bigger glass viewing area. But we are going to do it like that. So let me get this all done, and then we will come right back. All right, so looking good. This is what it should look like on all the sides thus far. Just repeating pattern. And uh, now we're going to fill in the viewing areas on the sides should be one, two, three of glass, and unless you are not going to do the double layers, in which case it would be five, of course. So you can go ahead and do that on each of the sides. It'll look just like that. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, and I'll see you in a second. All right, we got all of our glass filled in, looking good, looking good. I went back, got a refill on all my materials, and let's move on. Next, we're going to make our first layer of where the pistons are going to go. So right below here, hopefully... Eh. Okay, good. I'm going to put in four pistons on the layer right below the glass on each side. So that's why it makes it really helpful that you put in the glass first instead of saving that for last. So it will look just like this on each side. And you really don't have to use pistons for this top, damn it, for this top layer. You could use signs, but um, in my build I used pistons just because it's a little bit more efficient. And um, so I figured I might as well show you this way. So anyway... We did our row with the pistons, and now we're going to put these all across. You know what? I'm going to go back, and let me just see. I wanted to use the nether brick, but I don't have enough. Just so we can see where our pistons are going to be on each layer. And this layer right here is going to be the first uh, spot where it's possible that they can spawn. So very important. Doing good, doing good. All right, so we went all the way around, four pistons on each side. Um, next, we need to put in blocks going all the way around underneath the pistons. You don't have to do them on the sides here now unless you want to have it look all symmetrical and the outside are all cleaned up. But the most important spot is going to be right beneath these pistons. And that's because we're going to be sending power to this block to then activate the piston. So anyway, you know what? I'll just fill in. Or you're going to be filling in there anyway. So let's fill in this spot here, and then I'll show you what it looks like from the outside. But anyway, then we're going to have a row going around just like this. And this is where... Oop, right there. This is where our repeaters are going to be. Let's see. So 
going all the way around, all the way around. And see why it's kind of helpful if you use a different block where the uh, pistons are, just so that you can always know. Makes it a little bit easier. Let's see. Almost done. And voila. So need a lot of blocks for this build. Let's see. And this guy is... Nope. We need to do another layer around. So this is where the repeaters are going to be. Let me stick that guy in there. Alright, excellent, and then we're going to do another row going all the way around, and this is where the pressure plates are going to be that will activate, trigger those pistons. Did we do that one? Alright, cool. So, see how this is a cone shape? Um, they'll either, if they spawn, fall straight down through here, or if they spawn on the sides here, when they go on the pressure plates, the pistons will push them off so that they go down one layer. And you just basically rinse and repeat, do this one in until it gets down to just a four block spot. So, let's see here. Let's put in our pressure plates and our repeaters. So, obviously, ugh, obviously we have... Uh, Four pistons on each side. So that would be 4 times 4 is 16. So you need 16 pistons for this top layer. And 16 repeaters and 16 pressure plates. So do that. Then we'll drop in our pressure plates. Four on each side. And these all you just, whoop, just have them set to that uh, first setting. You do not have to put a delay in it at all. Alright, cool. So we got our first one done. And no matter where they land, it's just going to push them right off. Alright, so I dug down a little bit deeper. And so far this is what everything looks like from the outside. And we'll clean it all up later, but I just want you to see that. And uh, let's go ahead and put in our next layer of pistons. And again, you're going to want to find the center spot on each side. And this time we're just going to be doing two per side. So it gives us a total of eight. So there we go. Very nice. Let's put on our nether rock just to designate where those pistons are. And this is actually our last layer of pistons. We are more than halfway done. So pretty good, guys. All right. So put our little V shapes in over here. Actually, this should be, no, we can do that. We're gonna do the stone brick on the outside later when we clean it up. All right, very good. And then of course we need the blocks that will be receiving power right below the pistons. Very good, and I'm gonna have to dig this out even more. Almost done. So by the way, I just hit, I guess uh, around the time of the last video, I just hit 30,000 subscribers. It's absolutely amazing, guys. I want to thank you all so much. And I know not everyone that subscribed to me is there from Minecraft, but um, it's really quite an honor. I never would have thought I would have gotten this far in uh, YouTube. I can remember the day I started. In fact, I was just talking to a, f uh, a friend on the phone who uh, I could remember when I first started YouTube and I was getting like 10 views and I was like, wow, 10 people are actually watching my video. He's like, you're supposed to be getting like 100 people or something, huh? <laughs> but anyway, we'll do, we'll do something special for a video uh, fairly soon, even though I know it's already a little bit late on that. But anyway, okay. So these are going to be the blocks that are going to be receiving power. So let's fill in on the sides there because we're going to have to again send those repeaters to it, which is going to be coming right there and there. So you have that little gap there, just enough for the repeaters. And. Oh, okay, good. I made sure I had plenty of blocks before doing this video. All right, cool. Got that. Let's do our outer ring, and this is going to be, or inner ring, I should say. 
the uh, rectum of this project. All right, and let's sit down. Our repeaters, again, eight repeaters. And eight pressure plates. Done. So, that is all you have to do, bare minimum, to get this going. And then we are going to have to make a crusher. Now, as I showed you in the beginning of the video, I had a times crusher. Um, it's not necessary. That's purely just for convenience. Although I do recommend having it just because it's pretty difficult to count out the yelps coming from uh, Blaze. Just because their voices are really weird and... Uh, yeah, it, it, at least on my computer, it lags out a lot. So anyway, this is what it looks like from the outside. Let's get up atop before it's all cleaned up. So I could just leave it like that, but um, I'm going to throw in blocks to neaten up the look. And uh, basically, this is what I'm going to do. I'll do this off camera, but um, at least most of it. Just follow those layers along those layers alongside, and then I'm going to be using the uh, stone brick on the same as rings around the same layer that we have the pistons, just so that it, I guess, disguises them. Maybe you could say a little bit better. It's so not a whole lot of stone brick being used, but just enough to where it helps conserve a little bit. So, let's see here. Alright, so I'm going to finish cleaning that up off camera, and I'm going to make sure that I have the stripe, the side stripe going um, of the sandstone. And then the only cutout is going to be from that layer right there. So I'll be right back when it's done. Alright, so I have it all cleaned up. I'm not sure if this is exactly how I had it, the pattern, but it's good enough for demonstrational purposes, anyhow. And uh, I brought down the floor. It's kind of cool. I found uh, the start of another nether fortress, which uh, connects into a whole lot of them all around the area. So, very neat. And uh, for that reason, I'm going to have the crusher pointing this way. But, um, anyhow, I brought down another layer, just all the way around one row and then two rows so two rings and this is going to be the collection area for the uh, blaze as they spawn while the others are being crushed so now that we have what area we're going to do is our back let's put in our pistons to start off the whole uh, crushing mechanism all right so we have that that's going to be where they're crushed from i'm going to stick these here i used again nether brick in my final design but that's good enough for now. Um, then we're going to need, let's see. Oop. We're going to need spots to block off so that while the crusher's going, no other uh, blaze come down. So I believe that's done by having one here, one here, one here, and then one here. So then when you throw glass on them, these two will come forward and block off these two blocks, and then this one and this one will come out and block this side. So that is good, and this is going to be again going in on our viewing area. So if that's the case, actually I messed up there. Let's bring this down one more. Let's just see. Yeah, so they go in, that blocks off. So this is going to be... Did I put in? Yeah. So that blocks off. Okay. Sorry about that. It's hard to win it all from memory. What can I say? All right. And we can throw in blocks there for now. And this is going to be where that is. So this will be the floor for where they're being crushed. So let's throw in some different blocks just to designate that. All right, very cool. And then we need the crusher. Now, if this layer is going to come in and be filled with glass and they're going to be sitting here, they need something that will be crushing them while they're sitting here. So if that is the case, the piston needs to be 
diagonally one down on each side. And I know this is a little confusing, so you can just copy it if you're trying to follow. Um, so again, that's going to be the crusher. And that is the whole mechanism. So there's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Total of ten pistons. And then the rest can just be filled in with whatever block you want to use. Let's see. And that is like that. That is like that. Very good. And then you would eventually put in, let's see, these move forward. Yeah, so then you'd put in probably like a glass blocks right there for when you're doing it so they can't come out. And then you're going to actually want to dig down one deeper so that you have an area to hit them. So let me do that right now. That's kind of cool. We can actually use these blocks, these nether... Uh, nether bricks for that. Ouch. Alright, we have way too much of freaking everything. Alright, so these will be our, our floor. Um, annoying, how do I get out? Alright. And... I mean, you can really make the floor out of whatever you want, but I'm going to use this. So that is going to be our floor, and then you can just go ahead and hit them to kill them after they've been crushed. Let's finish filling in these blocks going all the way around. All right, very good. So that is the basic design for it. Arr, don't you hate when you do that? Place the wrong blocks. It just slides over by mistake. Cool. So that is the, uh, the basic gist of it. Um, I am going to show you then a simpler way to wire it. Um, if you want to see the full, full automated version uh, or the full, like, cool just two touch for everything um i'm going to leave a link for ethos video but uh if it's hard for you to follow or if you don't care um i will show you an easier way to wire it that will be not quite as cool but efficient enough so that it works and that's the real uh importance of it is that you have a system that works so i'll be right back while i get that set up for you